find some mutually acceptable topic which we can then not just us talk about, but you talk about and ask questions, and not necessarily ask questions, you want to say something, say it please, to the wider general sort of progress of what we're saying. Um, and I suppose the obvious question for me to start by asking David is as someone who was in about halfway through an enormous two and a half hour, well, not that, 3,000 page history of Britain until 1979. Um, people have always tended to, um, well, well, never said that he was a prophet when, when questioned about 1984. He, he saw it more in the nature of a, a warning, I suppose. And also, projection of the world that he was living in in 1948 when he finished writing it. And I, I think I mentioned myself that the landscapes of London that he uses are the landscapes of modern post war London. And um, I suppose it could be argued he saw the book as a kind of projection of various tendencies, not only in British, but in Western life at the time. Um, and we now, I suppose the whole world is associated with the popular consciousness by people who barely know that 1984 exists or that there was a book for that book farm. It's uh, the, the, the really sort of remarkable thing. As the resonance of those phrases, uh, Niger, Big Brother is watching you, Room 101, um, um, that kind of, but, but even the sort of the 2 plus 2 equals 5 um, uh, thing that O'Brien uh, tries to hammer into him. Um, it, it's amazing, it's really interesting, significant how this, these, these phrases have embedded themselves in the popular consciousness, in that there is a television program called Big Brother, and there was a television program called 101, Room 101. And there's, there obviously is something. There's, there's a way in which people instinctively would react and relate to those, to those statements and that view of the world. And I suppose the most obvious question to start by asking you, David, is that if 1984 is, is predicting the rise of a, a surveillance society, uh, a world in which individual and collective liberty is ever more constrained and repressed by a uh, dominant autocracy, how far do you think the tendency of the world began in 1984 is predicting? Do you, do you think he was a prophet in, in that respect? I mean, what? Well, I'll offer right. a few, yeah, yes, uh, offer a few thoughts as well, one of thoughts in which I keep, that wasn't a, a, a prophet, but in terms of him as a prophet, in that whole area, it seems to me, of surveillance, of liberty, of um, the um, uh, uh, often dishonest politicization of, 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 of language, and debasement of language for, 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 for political purposes. Um, he, uh, what he writes uh, resonates and seems to me as much as ever. Um, I find, personally, 1984 now an almost unbearable book to read. Um, I think it's a, 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 a brilliant, a brilliant novel. Um, but um, uh, I often have this discussion with, with, with my wife at home. We are feeling is that we tried to decide when did 1984 actually happen. It wasn't quite as early as 1984 itself. Um, so I still came to a point some years ago, um, and maybe it just was really wrong or something, but, but we felt, yeah, we're now just about at that, that point. Um, and I, I suppose the, uh, the whole ID card, ID cards controversy was a sort of, was a, was a sort of some kind of sort of tipping point, all the, the stuff about about cameras. I mean, it's hard not to start talking about a sort of daily male feature writer or leader writer at this point, but there's kind of an element now in our society of, 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 of thought, thought police, and that reason is free to speak. Um, I think people, uh, I think there's the really is the world is not famous to the best censorship is the sense of potential you exercise on yourself. You don't have to be told to do it quite right. automatically. Right. And I noticed that certainly in, um, in language, certainly as um, you know, writing, the number of times writing um, you know, writing pieces of journalism, right. usually about like, supposedly liberal newspapers, like the Guardian and the Independent, the letter will come back and say, You can't say that. Sure. You know, you know, you know, why can't I say that? Well, because it's, you know, for example, one thing you can't do in any context is mention the British National Party. It doesn't matter what you're saying, simply by mentioning them, you are, quote, playing into the hands <laughs> of the British National Party. Right. I remember right. once, yes. I remember writing, um, in fact, it was, it was, it was an autobiographical. Piece. It was a book. It was a, a little book about some kind of trial amateurism and sport. Um, I remember writing the, um, a sentence about um, in which I said that my father escaping the monotonous thraldom of the council estate 
and the editor came back and he said, mm, you mustn't say that. It might offend someone who was on a council estate. And I said, it's not about generality, it's about my father and how he didn't like living on a council estate. So I, I fail to see how the specific, but if you see, again, the full police work, it was, it's that whole idea, which again, I think is a very Orwellian concept, the idea that you are giving offence without the fence actually having been taken by anybody. You're preempting the remote possibility that somebody may not like what you're writing. Which makes, which makes writing very anodyne.